Welcome to PC Mac. Today we are going to install Open Media Vault 5 on our Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. So let's do it. First of all, let me show you which application we require for this project. So I have already downloaded these applications that we required here. So the first thing that we need is Raspbian Buster Lite image. Then we require a MD5 SHA checksum utility. And to check our SD card, we need to use this tool H2TestW. So let me just take you to my website and I have documented everything here. So you can visit the website and check out all the documents from here. So I have mentioned all the re software required for this project right here. You can download them directly by just clicking on the links and uh, it will take you to the download page. So I have already downloaded the required software for this project. So let's start installing Raspbian Buster Lite on our SD card. I have already extracted the image here, Raspbian Buster Lite. So let's go ahead and insert the SD card. And we need to use the SD card formatter to format the SD card first of all. Now the SD card is successfully formatted. And before that, we need to check that our image is correct or not. For that, what we need to do is we need to open this utility. MD5 and SHA checksum utility and we need to move down here and you can see the SHA256 for Raspbian Buster Lite is right here you can copy it and browse the path of the image you can either select this one and paste the hash here now just click on verify and it says SHA256 hash match so let's click on OK that means everything is good let's go and close it now once the SD card is successfully formatted what we need to do is we need to open here and open this software H2 test W and uh, open it Let's select English and then select the target and it's right here. Okay. Now uh, we need to just click on write plus verify to verify our SD card. It will take some time depending upon the size of your SD card. So I'll be back. So this software will take around half an hour, 40 minutes, depending upon the speed of the computer and the size of the SD card. Now, as you can see, uh, it's complete test finished without errors. You can see that and uh, the time it will take is around 19.38 minutes in writing and 13.30 minutes in verifying the disk. So now let's go ahead and uh, flash the SD card using the etcher. Let's click on OK and close this software and open archer and uh, select the SD card to write the image that we have extracted already extracted right here I have already extracted the image let's select it and select the target that is O in my case continue and flash the image now it will take some time around 10 minutes so I'll be back so the SD card is flashed successfully. Now what we need to do is close the software and take out the SD card. And once we take out the SD card, we need to plug it back again. Because we need to create a SSH file inside our SD card. So let's go ahead and click on cancel. Don't format the SD card at this point. Now let's go ahead and open the SD card from here, boot and create a file with the name SSH without extension. That will enable SSH on our Raspberry Pi. 
and we can use putty to access our raspberry pi image let's go ahead and close and we check the sd card and connect it to our raspberry pi and, and turn it on now my raspberry pi is turned on with raspberry light image uh, flashed on the sd card let's go ahead and open the wireless network watcher to check the ip address of our raspberry pi and as you can see it start populating the devices in my network it might take a moment so as you can see uh, we have our raspberry pi on ip address 20 let's go ahead and close it and uh, open ssh and type the ip address 1.20 and yes and from here what we need to do is we need to type pi as the username and this uh, password is raspberry hit enter now as you can see we are logged in uh, as a pi prompt pi at the red raspberry pi as we logged in to our raspberry pi through the ssh the first thing that we need to do is we need to change our password so let's go ahead and use the command password and uh, type the current password that is raspberry and after that we need to type the new password two times to change the password now the password is successfully changed and after that what we need to do we need to add our pi user to the ssh group for that the command is sudo add user pi to the ssh as you can see sudo add user pi ssh hit enter now as you can see adding user pi to the group ssh now pi is the member of ssh group so this is also done now what we need to do is we need to use sudo apt get update hit enter it will download all the latest updates and after that we need to upgrade our raspbian image it will take a moment let's go ahead and upgrade and yes so this command will update all the packages and after that we will go ahead and install open media vault on our raspbian image if you see this screen what you need to do is just press Q to quit and then the upgrade process will start again and upgrade the packages that are installed on our raspbian operating system now once the upgrade process is complete what we need to do is we need to reboot our system sudo reboot it will take some time to come back and after that we will go ahead and install open media vault 5 so let's go ahead and click on ok and restart the session and this time we need to use the new password that we have created let's go ahead and log in with pi and the new password so as you can see we are logged in now and what we need to do is we need to paste the command and it will start downloading the operating system now let me just show you the command here it's right here and you can also copy the command from here from the website itself now it will take some time to download the operating system and I'll be back so the download process is complete it uh, took around 20 to 30 minutes uh, to download the open media vault 5 image onto our raspberry pi now what we need to do is we need to type sudo reboot and once it's reboot we need to wait for like three to five minutes in between it will configure the services by itself and we can use the same ip address that is 20 192.168.1.20 to access our open media world and you 
can go ahead and close this session now and we can go ahead and open our Google Chrome and access our open media vault on the same IP address that is 20 it will take some time and as you can see we are here and we need to use our default username and password that is admin and open media vault and login now as you can see we are logged in here the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into general settings and we need to disable it the auto logout to disable save it and if you want to change the web administration password you can go and do that but I recommend you to please do that let's save the configuration now let's go ahead and change the administration password and save it as well now go to network and go to interface and add our ethernet interface here select ethernet 0 and ipv4 dhcp and then save it so it's right here and apply the current configuration after that we need to navigate to SSH to check whether we have the root access or not now let's go ahead and move to users and check which users is permit the root login so the user is spy now we can go ahead and open putty and access our SSH and uh, use spy and the password that we have changed on the first login and we are logged in here from here we can update and upgrade everything on our open media vault so guys that's it from my end if you like my work please hit the like button subscribe to my channel share this video with your family and friends and if you want to ask any questions about this video you can ask me in the comment section on the document you will find the comment section at the bottom of the video so thanks for watching bye bye take care have a nice day